In this session, we'll show how a roadmap can be built to Oracle's information management reference architecture by looking at various customer scenarios. What aspects have been of most importance and what advantages have been gained? Of course, relatively few people start with nothing. But just occasionally, we do see IT departments with no real BI provision outside of operational reporting. We met one such organization, and IT were genuinely only providing operational reporting. They knew this was wrong and had a plan to build an enterprise data warehouse. This, of course, started with some requirements analysis, and they were surprised by what they found. Frustrated by a lack of views across operational systems and flexible tools, a shadow IT cottage industry had sprung up in one area of the business. They had started by spreadsheet extracts being run and merged from various systems and then emailed around the organization. The team was soon in high demand and in order to scale, had started to build desktop databases in order to build reports more efficiently. Eventually, the shadow IT guys realized that this didn't scale either. So they bought their own server and mounted a large database on it that they shared. The team was quite big by now, about 10 people. Unfortunately, requests were not controlled, so it was often the case that data was duplicated many times in this database. For example, we found that there were 650 tables, and within those 650 tables, 16 copies of the sales measure, only three of which were consistent. Of course, building the EDW would take time, but what we were immediately able to do was to deploy an abstraction and federation layer. This immediately gave a single version of the question, just one version of sales. And then we could use this layer to roadmap over to the EDW once it contained the necessary measures. For most organizations, however, the problem is not too little management information provision, but too much. One large organization we work with had over 1,500 systems devoted to management information, BI, or data warehousing. They recognized that they needed less, but needed a roadmap to get there. In this case, the first decision they made was that they were sufficiently siloed to standardize on five enterprise data warehouses across the entire organization. Of course, we'd always aim for one, but for the very biggest organization, this might not be practical. The next step was to define the roadmap, and again, abstraction and federation were used to great effect. In this case, this layer could be put in place to simply move users to the new data warehouse provision when that part of the EDW was ready. Finally, I want to consider one retail organization who have had exactly the same enterprise data warehouse for the past 15 years. They have undergone an enormous amount of change in that time and have gone through a variety of business models and a variety of BI tools. What have they got right? Well, they've always had a separation of the business process neutral data, the things that happened, from the interpretation of that data. As business changes happened, they've replaced various star schemas and OLAP stretches with new ones, but the original facts have remained exactly the same. By holding on to these business process neutral elements, they've had access to a rich history which has been used extensively to model new business processes before they are implemented. This is the last session in the series. As you can see, our reference architecture is built on years of experience of Oracle's customers. It's proven and pragmatic and has helped both organizations with no IM provision and those with too much. If you'd be interested in a two-day free of charge workshop to understand how the architecture can be applied to your situation, please speak to your sales representative about our Excite workshops. Here you can speak to one of our information management architecture experts about your issues and a roadmap for adopting our reference architecture.